Now to all my people that donate to the channel The last episode will be episode 4 That will wrap up the Riot series And I will go in depth calling your name Because I do appreciate you guys New Jack, welcome Welcome to the number 3 of 4 videos You know what I'm saying And I told you I was going to cover this uh, series like that You know well The accidental riot Because it was an accidental riot You know a CO just caught an inmate doing something That that inmate ain't want to be rebooked on and giving a world charge to That's more time Shipped to another prison Or worse a prison So you know That can pop off in prison At any time Now what I'm going to do Is a kind of Explanatory episode I'm going to show you What happened Right before the 48 hours expired You know Before the FBI Was to come in Then I'm going to show you Up to that point Where the FBI Was supposed to be In this prison But a lot of things Didn't happen The way it should have happened Say so. Hey, what the is has been doing over there? Hey, bro, stop playing with me like that. Play with me no shit like that. How I explain this to you guys, we all everywhere. You know, it got dudes in day rooms, but you can see the dudes that's on the main line because they all up and down on the main line. Now, at this part of the day, it ain't that noisy. It's just everybody talking to the dude next to them. When the dude Patrick from Terrebonne hollered at this dude named Zoe from Waterproof, but he coming at the main sideways throwing a little crooked ass question at dude asking him what what the is is doing over there like this man no not a dude patrick he ain't doing this for no other reason but he bored right now now this the way of the convict a lot of convicts do this they try to find something to take and make they day exciting you know what i'm saying even if it's getting their ass in some deep shit so the argument just kind of keep on between these two dudes at the same time this happening say little corn oh you look like you got that sweet booty man why y'all doing this bro bro i don't be messing with nobody bro it got some chatter picking up between these dudes from Brule and a little dude named corn now this little dude named corn he don't rock with nobody he ain't even been in here that long so they really just testing him now these inmates bored everybody sitting around just waiting to see what crafting move gonna be because this right before they supposed to bring the fbi in now at the same time both of these arguments starting to get intense you hear some more shit brewing behind us it's some more inmates they arguing now these inmates a little bit on the main line but we can still hear that this shit about to kick off now you see some of the veteran inmates they moving around shifting their weapons and shit you know kind of bracing they self getting ready because they know if this thing pop off this shit can go haywire this shit can turn into an all-out brawl everybody that got beef with each other can run on each other at this particular moment say 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 y'all they go popcorn and another one of them good niggas let's move once again they go popcorn and one of the good niggas and i spot them too so so we take off. Oh no. Now before we can even get halfway down there, popcorn take off. Now y'all got to remember we ain't got no power so dudes ain't worried about the hot wires and shit. Popcorn jumping over little things that then fell. He hauling ass. He getting loose. He done left his homeboy. Now we done made it up to his homeboy. Bring your whole ass. Yeah. Before we can get up to the dude and spring in action, it's like Roger come out of nowhere, step out the darkness, grab dude and start hitting him up. Now when we catch up to Popcorn and his homeboy, we a good little ways up. Like I said, it ain't no limits to where we can go now, cause the power off and all the wires we ain't bother bomb. So we a good little ways up when we turn and see some dudes then pry open the medical building. Now you know it's mostly the addicts that's doing this kind of shit here. So we ain't really paying attention to that. So after we done did what we had to do, well, Roderick done did what he had to do, we all start heading back together. Hey, no, no. Man, get the hell out of my way, man. Shit. Before we can make it up to L, we hear firing and we see one dude coming off the hall and get his shit splat. Now check this out. Everybody running, you hear loud screaming and shit, dudes trying to get somewhere. Now this is what's going on. It's, it's, it's all kind of chaos and shit happening in this moment. You know the firing going on and after a couple shots, that kind of stopped. Uh, uh, boom, boom, you know, boom. We make it back up to where we was and it's an all out break. Raw dudes fighting and jumping off the of tables, sneaking dudes and knocking dudes out one lick, jugging dudes from behind. Now me and New Jack, we all pull out our weapons and get real close together and we just looking around waiting on somebody to run at us. Nobody we know is involved in this big old all out fight. We even see the little dude corn and pull out a weapon and hit the dude up that was playing with him. Now this fight go on for a minute. 
We don't think this fight gonna stop. Ain't no COs to break it up. We see dudes getting hurt left and right all over the place. Now you gotta keep in mind, they still got dudes in here that's been blew up and hurt. Ain't nobody taking these dudes out. When it's a riot, these dudes lay around until this riot is over. You know, so you got dudes that's rolled out. You know, and, and body getting old up in here, and this type of shit is accepted as normal. This starting not to even bother me at the moment. You know, we walking over dudes. And if you mess with a dude, yeah, you drag his body somewhere and throw his cover over him or something like that. But ain't too much of that going on because everybody in survival mode. Now, this fight keep picking up. You see some of the little timid dudes that scared, ducked off in corners. They got tears running down their face. They are terrified because nobody knows know what's gonna happen at this moment you have no safety ain't nobody here to stop this for a while this go on and the only thing that stopped this fight Ooh, yeah hey man where they coming from bro uh, we start hearing the gunshots again and seeing dudes getting hit now everybody ducking behind something the fight is over with Everybody looking, trying to see where this coming from. Finally, dudes look down the hall. Man, craft near man, they on the hall. So once dudes spot them down there, and they taking aim, trying to spot somebody else. But by this time, everybody hiding behind something. Craft and the COs, they done stepped off the medical hall. They ain't come up. They only stepped off the medical hall, and they ranging dudes from down there, knocking dudes off. Now, we wondering at this moment, is the moment that the FBI supposed to be coming in. But that ain't happening. For some reason, Kraftnam still trying to plead with dudes and knock dudes off and scare them into surrendering. Now the CO start popping off other shots and you just hear shit ting ting bouncing off the metal tables and dude hiding trying not to get hit. You know everybody kind of wondering what's going on. So after they do this a couple more times, they duck back on the medical hall. Everybody, they come back out of where they was hiding and they trying to go walk down there to see a craft them down there. A couple brave souls go down there. You know what I'm saying? They actually make it down there and see that craft them not on medical hall no more. But this is when the questions start. Asking the dudes that did survive and make it back from medical that was trying to break in there and steal these medicines and shit like that. They start questioning these dudes, asking them what craft them was doing down there. They wasn't really doing nothing, you know. When we get up in there, they just kind of boxing up paperwork and stuff like that. You know, but they moving real fast while they doing it I guess they knew we was going to be coming through Now these ignorant ass inmates For the life of them They can't figure why crafting them down there So worried about boxing up this particular paperwork And why they moving so fast I already know They trying to cover up All this different shit that didn't happen in this prison They getting rid of these files Now at this point, I'm just speculating But I'm figuring It's the files that COs did harm to inmates Like Putting inmates in them showers, beating inmates, you know, half to, you know what I'm talking about, Dr. Garcia, things like this. They got to get rid of this. Everybody know once the FBI come in to stop this ride, who they going to be accompanied by? The DOJ. At this time, dudes start putting their heads together. Even I'm speaking out. Man, they trying to cover up everything that happened in this prison, especially Dr. Garcia. So all the inmates, they understand the concept now that this shit is serious that these COs will do whatever it takes to cover up they wrongdoing, including knocking each and every one of us off. So while we all and figure this out and we talking, we hear crap. Now listen up. I'm appealing to some of you smarter inmates. You need to turn over this prison. Surrender yourselves now. Because if I got to take a couple more of you down to save some of you other ones, the majority of you other ones, because when these white boys come in, they ain't going to give a damn about about you. I'm trying to save you. These are crap exact words. I'm not speculating at all. Say crap, suck a dick. Ain't nothing going down, man. You just dropped all these dudes and you think it's going down like that? You gonna have to bring the LBI in. Son, listen to me. I really do care about you guys. I'm telling you now, what I'm gonna do to show you I care, I'm gonna give you four more hours. And this is the max until I gotta let them white boys know what's going on in this prison. So if you don't want to get seriously injured or better yet, 
Turn this prison back over and surrender yourselves. Now, nah, this prison is majority black. So what he doing is psychology. He's trying to play the race card to get everybody to surrender. But he don't know these dudes don't give a damn about that. He see you just like he see the FBI. So while you playing all these games, you just buying yourself some more time. Because right now, they just step back on the hall by medical. So y'all back down there trying to get rid of shit while y'all down here preaching to us. Four more hours, fellas. Four more hours. And after he say that, they disappear back by medical. Four more hours. Do you think any of these inmates that's in here scared, that's in survival mode, want to go through this shit for four more hours? We don't give a damn what these predators and these terrorizers thinking. We want this shit to come to an end. We ready to face whatever consequences they got coming to us. We tired of this shit, bro. They got dudes that's laying here. Family don't know. These people don't even exist no more. It's all kind of chaos and shit that didn't happen and you gonna say four more hours now we gonna take it up an hour after he done said four more hours <laughs> I'll take it bro take it man, let me go bro stop let me go boom boom you coming bitch now we done been in this prisons for so long by ourselves to dudes that ate all they snacks cause ain't no child during the days so dudes gotta beat up other dudes to take their canteen or whatever they got they got dudes pulling dudes from wherever they at beat them up trying to run up in them while this shit happening me and new jack we spring into action we start going around to some of these dudes we see got tears running down their face or got the look of terror on their face and tell them look man look y'all stick with us bro we gonna look out for y'all but if shit go down you better go down fighting with us bro and most of these little dudes they join up with us but as usual you know you got them little dudes too man i just don't want to get into it with nobody bro i don't know who y'all got be with bro i'm gonna just kind of stay like this bro I'm staying out the way and don't realize this ain't that type of situation shit don't work like that right now dog say hey come check this shit out right quick come look what they did this CO we see some little dude come off E say come check this out come see what they did this CO so now we want to know cause this is some serious shit so we all head down when we get by E man we see Coley laying on the floor face down buck naked they done rolled on this man booty cheeks all all kind of little different writing and shit like that. They got this man decorated from head to toe. He rolled out. It's no more Coley. Like I say, the prison never did catch Coley for what he was doing, but the inmates did. Now this shit right here I'm about to run to you. I found this out after prison. I mean much later after prison. Maybe 2012, 2015, somewhere up in there I found this out. Now you know how like even in school when you know people and then you run across them in life it's the same way in prison when you come home from prison and later on in life you run into these people and then y'all start trying to catch up and y'all just get to discussing things well from one of those type of people i find out Coley originally from Tennessee and he also had a nephew that went to jail in Tennessee. Now they say this nephew which his name is Curtis Watson they say this dude was real real violent and he went to prison but he was getting ready to get out of prison but you know what he do and he was on workforce you know and at this Tennessee prison they permitted to run all through this farmland. It's acres and acres of this prison you know what I'm saying and inmates come and go all through that so i was told one day while he was out working he went into the warden house that's on this actual land and he really violated her and rolled her out you know i ain't believe it when i heard it because i'm hearing it from another inmate but what i did do when i got all the facts from this dude i went and looked this up and for sure curtis watson did roll this female warden out at a tennessee prison matter of fact i think they kind of buried the story or whatever but when you look it up you can find it just look up curtis watson and and Tennessee. Now the reason why I bring this up, cause in my head I'm like, what's the odds, uncle and nephew, both of y'all motherfuckers, right? both of these motherfuckers like violating women. Just like I said, that furthers my point. Some people just naturally evil, and it's all genetics. Look at this, Coley is long gone by the time this nephew come of age, you know, and start doing time. So this was in his genetics, and he was just naturally evil, and you turn out to do the same thing your uncle was doing. And what's the most shocking thing about this, I know that's his nephew, because they mentioned it in the story that he had an uncle that was a CO by 
the name of Daniel Coley, and he was a CO in Louisiana, but he was a CO in Tennessee first. At the time, I'm just sitting there looking at Coley, inmates sitting around discussing it, some inmates laughing. Then we see one inmate pull his shit out and start pissing on the man. After he finished pissing on the man, he takes his foot and kicked the man over. When they kick this man over, this man's shit is open. They completely mutilate this man. I don't think y'all hear me. You know how hard it is to open up the chest? Some doctors gotta get a chest crack to open up the chest. They got this man open, man. You can see all this man organs. They took some time to do this here. Bro, this shit looked so nasty. I couldn't stand to stay there another second and look at this shit. This shit is, it ain't like you think it'll look. If you ain't never seen somebody inside, it ain't gonna be how you think. You gonna see meat bulging from different spots and man, this shit just look completely disgusting. We got the hell up out of there. Jonesta, what it do be, Matt? So when I'm coming off of E, and as you know, all that is considered A block, I'm coming up and Bobby Mac immediately called me. So I head over and dab Bobby Mac up and we just get to shooting the shit. Bitch, uh, uh, bitch, bitch, where my money at? You must think cause of all this shit going on, all best of all. Bitch, I want my money and I want my shit now. Hey, who the fuck you think you talking to? You don't see where you at and what's going on? Boy, I getting your shit right now. Oh shit, look at that shit, young. Look, that's them boys from Pineville. I'm shooting this shit with Bobby Mac when all out the blue we see it's Lily get into it with which Bobby Mac told me them boys from Pineville. It's about six of them boys from Pineville and it's Lily walk up to them dudes by himself. You'll get off and who shit you got me back. Big man stick Lily. Bow. What he do that for? Hell no. Boo boo. Go round. Boo boo. Yeah big man. Bow bow. Uh, uh. When Big Man stick is Lily, Lester come running and he hollering the whole time he running. He hit one of the dudes and knock him out. He ain't put no fear in these dudes. These dudes start punching on Lester. Uh huh, Big Man. Bow, bow. You thought this shit was sugary, huh? Bow. They so caught up, they got Lester in the circle, and I mean, they ringing this shit. Huh? Oh. I tell you, them instant start coming out of everywhere. I mean, they all these dudes, all you see is pink every time they swing. Now, normally I say they hit them boys everywhere but the bottom of their feet, but this day, them boys got hit up there too. Like I said, there's nobody here to break none of this up. Huh? 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 This day, you really get to see how violent them New Orleans issues is. They got these dudes all on the ground just slashing them. I mean, they swinging these blades. They cutting they self. Gotta be. Now, I don't think I gotta say, you know, I'm paraphrasing and I'm, you know, just saying what I think. Because they slanging these blades and dudes trying to block this in any way they can. Now, when the issues finish with these dudes, it's a bloody mess. The prison in a horrible state at this moment, you know. So after they finish with all that or whatever, everybody politely go back to doing whatever it was that they was doing. After about 45 more minutes, the lights and shit come back on. Shoo! You see it sparking down there. Dudes running. Yeah, the bitches know. Yeah! Ah, the lights back on! Now these assholes celebrating. They think they done did something to make Kraft and them turn the lights back on and everything copa steady. That shit is shortly lived. Man, they go to FBI. They in this bitch. They ain't gonna take me. I swear I'm going down like a soldier. Come on, man. Let's go this way, bro. We going down the A block. We gonna barricade ourselves. Hey, New Jack, man. Everybody get down. Hell, what they talking about? Now the first explosion catch everybody off guard, but dudes start thinking erratic, everybody running around, it's just, man, it's so much chaos, you can't get a decent thought in your head, so it was meant to stun you from the get-go, it did that, but it made other dudes, like, lose their mind, some dudes been up for days at a time, ain't nobody really thinking clear, New Jack, you know how we do it, we gonna pick up from here on the next episode, cause it's a lot to unpack on the next episode cause when the FBI come in the shit hit the fan but don't even trip New Jack we sticking to the schedule episode 4 coming right at you tomorrow I'll see you guys then and I love you